Hey guys, been a while since I got a video on the channel. I was playing the new Spider-Man game, which is pretty fun. I also got pretty sick, as some of you know from the community post. But I'm back now. So what have I missed since the last video? Let me check. Holy shit. We made it to a thousand subs. We did it, guys. I never thought we would get to a thousand this quickly. I remember when I started production on the work video last year. I thought we were going to battle for a thousand subs in 2024. But here we are now, over a thousand subs and still counting. Thanks to everyone for watching my channel and joining me on this amazing ride. I'm happy with the growth and all the kind words so many of you have given to me. It honestly means a lot. So how do I intend to celebrate this occasion? Simple. In celebration of all the good folks who have gotten me to this point, I'm going to respond to some of the constructive and pleasant comments i gotten from the work video, since many of you guys came from there. So you might be saying, why am I making this video? And why am I only focusing on the good comments and not respond to the bad comments, or just focusing on the bad comments in this video? Initially, I plan on this video being a half and half. The first half would be me responding to the typical trash comments you would see with the video of this opinion. However, after talking to a good friend, he made a really good point to me. There's not enough videos of people responding to good comments. You see videos like mean tweets or YouTubers responding to some trashy comments on the videos, and while those videos can be fun to watch, they don't accomplish anything. Yeah, I get it. It's very fun to shit on trolls. I have done this action in my comments by refuting and debunking plenty of bad faith comments people left. Really, it does nothing in the end but give assholes and trolls too much attention. So no, I won't give them a place in my videos. Instead, I want to give proper thanks and responses to people cheering me on and the people who want to provide me with some good criticisms so I can improve. Those people are worth my time. And we shall do it right now. Now to be clear, when I say these comments are good, I'm not saying I agree with all of them. I just think they are well argued and made in good faith. You know, they don't lie or misrepresent my points. They just have a different opinion than me and explain their reasonings. I won't be able to cover all of them, but the vast majority of the comments are like what I just said. So I appreciate the civilness most of y'all brought to the comments. Let's start with this comment, which does give some fair criticisms about my video. My boy, JF4132, made a very well written comment. He brought up a lot of points, but we'll focus on just one point since I already responded to the comment, plus I have revised some of my thoughts upon revisiting this comment. The full conversation is in the original comment section if you want to see it. Now, one of their points was how I portrayed myself in the video. They claim I'm a bit contradictory when I say, it's okay to like this arc. However, I later said, and hopefully I'll change your mind. Which implies it's not okay to like this arc. This point is 100% spot on. Now, when it comes to my videos, I always try to make sure I'm coming off as playing a character or exaggerating certain emotions. I wouldn't rage about a story I don't like in real life. But also, I do genuinely mean when I say this. It's okay to like things I don't like. I mean it. I don't think any less of anyone who likes the work. A very good friend of mine loves this arc, and we don't hate each other since we're both adults, and we don't end our friendships over small things like an anime arc, you know? But back to the point. Yeah, I admit, I did mess up with that aspect of the video. And if I had picked up on that mistake earlier, I would have changed it to. And maybe I'll change your mind. The other point I want to address is that people have different standards for viewing media. Another point I want to address is how everyone has a different standard when examining media. Now for me personally, if someone has a different standard in how they examine media, I have no issue with people putting more value on one thing over other things when it comes to media. One person can look at the media of anime with more focus on the designs and look of the series, while another person could look at the production value and how well made the show is without caring much about the writing. Those perspectives are entirely valid, and I wouldn't object to anyone using those metrics to praise the work or any other piece of media. However, writing is arguably the least subjective part of storytelling. 
Let me explain. So you have the character of Midoriya. You know his traits. He's kind, heroic, and always wants to save people. Those aspects are strong indicators of the type of person he is and what he wouldn't do. Now imagine if he abruptly decides to become an Emperor Palpatine knockoff, just saying, yeah, screw being good, I'm gonna be evil. That example I gave is objectively poor writing. Not just because of the gigantic character assassination, but why would you take Midoriya, one of the most noble characters in the whole series, and turn him to the exact opposite? Now you might be saying that example is pretty extreme, but you get the point. Bad writing is straightforward and not up for dispute unless someone can bring up points to prove why it isn't bad writing. And no, don't use the you're just nitpicking point because pointing out why a story is fundamentally broken on a character and plot basis is not the same thing as noticing a stormtrooper bonking his head in a scene. And while you can't argue about why a piece of writing isn't terrible, I doubt anyone with credibility would say it's subjective. You either dispute my points with actual arguments with references, or you accept my points. But overall, this comment is still S tier, probably my favorite in the entire comment section. Please everyone, go give my man a like. He really deserves it after cooking here. A criticism I have seen is how I slurred a few words together at points. Again, this criticism is valid. I mentioned this story a few times in the comment section, but I might as well tell it here. So the recording of the video was a hectic process, mostly since there were a lot of times the audio just sounded like shit, or it just started to sound like shit one day, and I had to re-record it. Now, how many times do you think I re-recorded the whole video? Two times? No. Three? Nope. Four? Five times! Yeah, but after the fifth time, I need to get this video out, and it sounded fine enough, so I said, eh, whatever. And while I did try to fix these mistakes, I couldn't get them all. Needless to say, I learned from this mistake, and the audio problems have gotten less drastic with each new video. My newer videos don't have this flaw with them, at least from what I remember. Regardless, I still take this criticism very seriously, and it's a flaw with the work video. Maybe one day I'll remaster the video, but that's years off. So let's not think about it. Now pay attention guys, we got a W comment here. From the Sin of Greed No More 1516. Me personally, I enjoyed the story, but I will say, I was annoyed that Midnight's death wasn't more of a spectacle. I know she was wounded, but she was an experienced warrior. She could handle nameless goons. And I will say this arc does have a lot of flaws. And I don't blame anyone for disliking or hating it. Personally, I love the arc despite its flaws. It made me excited and sad in moments. I think Grand Trio should have died would have made Deku wearing his cape more symbolic and impactful. Still love the arc, but man, we were robbed. Edit. I have always hated Best Genus. Don't know why, but I always have, so I just tune him out. With that, that was my opinion. Whoever reads this, thank you and goodbye. Well, isn't that a gem? A fan of the arc who acknowledges the story isn't perfect and understands why people might not like the arc, be an absolute class act and chat all around. Thank you, dude. We don't get enough people acknowledging something they like isn't perfect, but not being bitter about it. I love this comment too. I know I'm late, but take this W. Aw, thanks man. I really appreciate that. Twice Jaeger made a thread responding to all my points either agreeing or disagreeing with my arguments. Even pointing out how I even missed the awesome stuff like Dabby's big reveal and the whole Todoroki family deal. Which, yeah, I regret not mentioning those elements in my video. And while I don't agree with his counterpoints, as I did respond to him in the comment section, I'll give him points for being in good faith and responding to what I actually said. Imagine that on the internet. Calvin also, despite making an argument I don't think it's good, still gets my respect for at least explaining his perspective and how if Genus was a smart character, this story would be way less interesting. Again, not a good argument in my mind, but he's still a respectable lad. I just want to address two criticisms that I've seen a few times in the comments, and it's usually in good faith. Firstly, a mistake pointed out was that Shurikumo and Midnight weren't actually dating before he died. I'm sorry for getting that bit wrong, guys. Fully on me there. But the other criticism is something I can't agree with. For context, in the video, I point out how Eraserhead is an out-of-character douchebag because he didn't care that Midnight died. A few people tried to defend Eraserhead's action here, said it was fitting of his character since he was always a very cold person 
and also some people handle trauma differently than others, and the Razorhead isn't the best when it comes to handling his own. I'll admit, specifically in the context of this scene, and ignoring the larger arc, I can see the point here, and I wouldn't call it character assassination. However, when taking into account the larger context of the arc, the problems start to rear their ugly head. It was extremely out of character for a Razorhead not to bring Midnight to meet Korrigiri to see if they can get Shirakumu to talk. She was still a Razor's and Shirakumu's friend. She deserved to know. Not to mention, the fact she would have been a great asset in reaching Shirakumu, since while they weren't a couple, they did have feelings for each other, which again, a Razorhead knew about. And if you're going to tell me a Razorhead didn't want to traumatize Midnight, she likely wouldn't have a very different reaction than what Eraser and Mike had when they tried to reach out to Shirakumo. Plus, again, Midnight deserves to know just out of sheer moral obligation, just on the fact that they're friends. And someone like Eraser had wouldn't keep the truth from his friend, especially with their history together. But back to the main scene, never again does Mike or Eraser talk about Midnight or have a scene where they attempt to work through their emotions about her. And if you are going to say that their relationship was only in Vigilantes, that story is still canon. And this arc does rely on you to read that arc to get this moment. Also, Hori supervised that spinoff, so he should know everything about these characters. If I was going to be uncharitable, with the major disrespect Midnight got in this arc, I could speculate that Horikoshi or one of the staff really hates the character for some reason, and that's why we got what we got. Again, that's just speculation, but you get my point. The disrespect is too much. So again, the moment with Eraser and Mike in the hospital isn't terrible in isolation. However, with the broader context of the arc and these characters' histories, it continues on the trend of breaking the characters from vigilantes and their relationships intentionally or not. So no, Eraser is still assassinated in this scene. That is all the comments I wanted to highlight in this video. There were a lot more great comments I couldn't cover. If you guys want to see more comments, I recommend you guys go to my work video. I responded to plenty of them, and most of them are in good nature. And it's way better than I expected. Thank you to everyone for the support and getting me to this milestone. I'm happy you guys gave me a chance on my content. It really means a lot. Even from the people who disagree with my opinion, I still admire that most of you took the time to respond and lend me your thoughts. Seeing well thought out responses to my points and people giving my arguments the time and day to respectfully disagree with me, it gives me a smile. But I also found a sense of validation knowing others had the same thoughts and frustrations with the arc. Knowing it wasn't just me who hated this arc. Being able to speak to why you guys didn't like it, it makes me feel incredibly proud. But most importantly, it just makes my day knowing people, for the most part, were respectful. Especially on the internet. But now, we have enough celebrations. It's time to get back on the review train. It's time for me to review something I really love. It's time for me to review a GOAT anime. It's time for Chainsaw Man. HOT DAMN! Thank you for watching. If you want to support this channel, please leave a like and subscribe. It would really help out the channel. Thank you for listening. Take care, everyone, and have a great day.